It's time to put these quarterbacks for the 2024 NFL Draft class into tears. Who's the trucks? Who are the hitches? And who are the trailers? We're going to tell you about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft. Your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find the follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. Guys, I got to keep this intro over to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at the talent code. You talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 National Champ, here to bring you championship-level contests around the NFL Draft 24-7, 365, man. I want to start this off by saying shout-out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. And then listen, man, hit that like button because I promise you this is an action-packed show. You're going to want to comment, so you're going to drop some comments after each segment. And then if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But DP, we are talking quarter back tears yes listen we know across the draft community right there's a there's a trucks and trailer conversation but me and dp were talking sometime last year right and i was like you know what we have to do invoke this hitch conversation right those guys right in the middle right the guys right in the middle but they're so important because without the hitch there is no truck or trailer right but they're not pulling everything but the important hitches so we're going to break this down tier one two and three that's trucks hitches and trailers we're going to have some fun with this action pack show but dp before we get started, man, why don't you hit him with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Guys, trucks. That should be self-explanatory. Those that Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allens, the Lamar Jacksons, the Joe Burrows, those guys that... You can hitch the team's wagon to, and they can take you to the postseason. They're the reason that you are winning. And Keith, I we already know what it's a big three, big three of these quarterbacks for the twenty twenty four NFL draft. Maybe big four, but when you talk about trucks, I'm gonna throw out the names, Keith. You just let me know truck, trailer, hitch. Where are you putting them at? Caleb Williams, definitely a truck, without a doubt, a truck. Jaden Daniels. I am leaning, so I, I'm, I'm about to remix this a little bit in the everyday is that tap in with us. They're going to be like, hold on, Keith, you pivoted on us a little bit. I am leaning towards a truck because of the usage of his legs. If they can get that part down, peg, I'm a lean truck, so I'm going to say truck. All right, that's two in the truck bucket. Drake May. I'm going to go truck. Truck, all right. Jay, now that's a big three. For me, Keith, before I get to J.J. McCarthy, but for the big three, for me, in terms of who's the trucks, I'm with you. Caleb, Drake May, and Jaden Daines. I think all of these guys have the skill set. You know, I think what the scout, I think the old scout told me 85% of players that's drafted is like they're scheme-dependent guys. Like they have to be in a specific role, yep. a specific offense or defense. And we see that every day, right? There's a specific role for every player. But then you come across guys who are, ta from a talent standpoint, they can transcend and fit in different places. And I look at those three quarterbacks, I think all three for sure have the physical talent, right? The physical talent to be trucks and to transcend in terms of schemes and placement, right? I think so all of can, them do. Yeah, what, what is your your take? Because th this how I feel with Caleb Williams, and, I'm, and we have a couple minutes before we have the mm -hmm. transition, right? So I want to go through each truck, right, and, and, and talk about that situation. Caleb Williams, right? And we talked about how he plays in the air raid system and holds on to the football and things like that. So is he a, a transcendent player as far as scheme-wise? Do you think he can transcend schemes when you look at him? I, I do. I think the main thing is just getting him, in, getting him used to being in 
a different kind of more pro style scheme, right? Getting him in there, getting those reps under center. You know how we talked about what well, Michael Penix at the senior bowl. We got to mm-hmm. see him go under center, get the familiarity with it. I think that's the big thing with him, right? Because I think skill wise and you know, actual game, like he could fit it. You know what I mean? If you want to put him in the vertical offense, he's got the arm talent to be in the vertical offense. He can throw accurately and on time when he wants to. That's the big thing. Like when he's on time, he can throw the on time, quick hitting routes and, you know, talking about option routes and quick slants and get the ball out of his hand quickly. And then if you're in a kind of a, a mesh of those two things, he can do that as well. He can be that improviser. He can do so many different things. So I do think he could fit another scheme that's not air raid. The main thing is getting him into that offense and being consistent. I don't want to go in. The, I don't want him going somewhere where you're worried that the offensive coordinator is going to get fired or the scheme is going to change after year one. And he's just, he's still trying to learn and develop that in that well, into his game. DP that, that doesn't bode well for the Chicago bears, right? Because it, it I mean, they, they have Matt Eberflus. That's a new offensive coordinator there. They may only be there for one year. General manager, Ryan Poles, right? So that's an interesting situation, but I'm agree with you because I, I go with this and I just looked at his stats DP for as bad as a year that Caleb Williams had, do we know that he only threw five interceptions mm-hmm. and three of those came against Notre Dame, right? Or um, three or four of them came against yeah. one team. So as, as bad as we want to say he played, I think he identified a high floor, right? The fact of, hey, like I have all of these tools and then when everything goes bad for as critical as people are of me, I still protect the football in some facet. So I thought that that was interesting when I looked at that stat. Let's go to the next guy, DP. And and I'm sorry, with Caleb Williams, I just think his, his, his skill set and his tools are just – above and beyond that he should be able to figure something out and carry a team. That's why I say I think he's a truck. Let's go to the next guy. I want to go to Drake May because I'm going to say this statement, right, that I don't know if Drake has straight A's or he has one A-plus trait. Let me say that. I don't know if Drake May has one A-plus trait, but it seems like he's B-plus for a lot of different categories. And how do you quantify that being a truck? So – I think we, you know, and you may disagree. You may think he has a lot of eight traits. So I just, he, I think he's got, I, I'm kind of with you on the B. Plus. I think he, I think he has at least one. Like, I think like he handles, some, I think his A trait is probably going to be that, that the way he handles pressure, like the negotiation yeah. with pressure. Okay. I think he's, he's probably one of the best, not even out of the big three. Because when you get pressure on him, his pocket movement, like he slides and moves in the pocket very well. And, and he doesn't have to find throwing lanes because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, like he's a tall kid. So he like moves in the pocket and he can get the ball out. But he's also, you know, that improvisational guy as well, not to the Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels aspect, but he's more very athletic and can make plays with his legs. I think for him, he's got some stuff that I think arm talent, I will put it as like an A minus. I think his arm is really good. I don't think it's mm-hmm. I wouldn't call his arm elite. Like the Justin Herbert stuff, man. Justin Herbert got a cannon, man. Like this is yeah, it's a different I, he's, he's got an elite yeah. caliber arm. I don't think he's in that realm of Mahomes and Allen and um and, and Herbert. I don't think he's got that arm talent, but I do think he has a great arm, like a really, really strong arm. So I think that's an A minus for him. I think the main thing for him is going to be more technical. I think that's where he's got the B, you know what I mean, footwork and Stuff like that, like, cause he's he's got a habit of overstriding. He's got some balls thrown into the dirt. Like, you want to you want to get that trajectory right, right? And I think he's got to get better with that and making sure his 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 accuracy is consistent, right? Cause I think that's where everything, like, just from the lower body down, that's where I get my biggest concerns with him. And it's that Phil Longo stuff, man. You know why? I don't know why he keeps getting hired. Cause he ruins. The, these quarterbacks' footwork, because Sam Howell was the same way coming out of North Carolina, right? Footwork was wonky. He, you know, didn't activate his feet a lot of times. It was like, I remember writing this report. He had, I called it dead feet in the pocket. Like, bro, step into some throws and and don't overstride. I think that's a big thing for Drake May. So with him, he's got one or two A's, and he's got some stuff that he can improve to become an A. But I think this is a guy that you absolutely look at how he handled things at North Carolina, not having the best talent, and showcasing that, you know, I can get it done, and I don't even have an elite caliber weapon. Heck, his best receiver was Josh Downs. He went, what, third round, right? He, he wasn't throwing to some of these. He wasn't throwing to Jordan Addison. He wasn't throwing to to, to Taj Washington. Who was, I mean, Taj probably going to be like a, a late day two, early day three pick. But, you know, he wasn't throwing to Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. He didn't have that type of talent. And I think if you, you really put him in a good situation, 
to watch him develop, I think you could have yourself an all-star type of quarterback. Yeah, and I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels, right? And and I think it's the running ability. And then if people ask me, Keith, well, what moved you up on Jaden Daniels, right? I, I had to come to terms with that maybe he did get better, right, from mm -hmm. the previous year. And then also it was him going through his route progressions, right, like going a one, two, three, being able to get rid of the football, right, and then at the adding – the legs element to it right because i think he became an even more even more comfortable runner of the football from last year to this year and that's why you've seen the more explosive runs right with this year at lsu versus last year so yeah i, I think that that Jaden daniels has truck traits also because yeah. when you you factor in the legs and then you also factor in that hey this guy is good enough throwing the football right to to keep some defenses off balance so that's why i, I went back watched the film and had to move some things up but dp we're on to the hitches, right? This is something that we do at Locked On NFL Draft, right? Everybody talks trucks and trailers. We're talking about the guys in the middle. And the guys in the middle of the NFL, they're sprinkled all over the league, right? We're talking about your Dak Prescott's. We're talking about your Kirk Cousins, right? Your guys that throw 35 touchdowns, you know, year in and year out, right? But we may not necessarily put them in the elite category. There's quite a few guys in this draft that we're going to talk about that are those type of guys. So coming up next, man, we are getting into those hitches. This next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing. Guys, it is truly draft season. Hence you tuning into this pod. But what I really, really am happy for and I love is that we're about to head to this NFL scouting combine next week. So I cannot wait for that. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a great time. Guys, therapy can be different for everyone. All right. Most of us have a bigger bigger problems than our favorite sports teams. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. So if you think about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Keith, like you said, we coined the phrase. Well, actually, it was you because you're the one who threw it out there first. And I'm like, yeah, we got to keep this. The hitches, <laughs> it, it can't just be trucks and trailers. And I love how you ended the first segment, the segue, right? Talk about Dak Prescott, the Kirk Cousins, those guys who are good quarterbacks, but they may not be the elite. The no. trucks are the elite. And I love how you broke that down. When you look at this class, Keith, I'm, I almost mentioned him in the first segment, J.J. McCarthy, who's my QB4. When, when, I, when I think about him, he is a hitch that has the ability to be a truck but his right now where he is he it's going to take some time for to throw that hitch into the body shop and then that hitch becomes a truck because there's some development that has to go on with him but tools wise athleticism arm talent all of those things are there keith but he's just so much i ain't gonna i'm not gonna call him raw he's just inexperienced because of the offense in terms of true drop back sets and what michigan did but to me he's a hitch He's got all the traits, in my opinion, to be a truck. No, I, I'm I'm right there with you, and that's why you talk about the flip flop between him and Jaden Daniels. Um, like I said, I told people once before, I'll tell them again, JJ McCarthy, go watch the film. Just just watch the film, eliminate the social media stuff, and check it out. And I think there'll be some pretty impressive things from him. But I, I think it's important to kind of, like I said, to, to put it in context of a hitch, also, right? And and I think the hitch is potentially the variance of play that you could get, right? And the reason that you mentioned, you know, your 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 Dak Prescotts, your your Jalen Hurts, your Jared Goffs, right? Um, you know, the Brock Purdy's of, of of the NFL is because the last two names I mentioned, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, right? At some point, they were in the NFL MVP conversation. So the point is, is that when you're a hitch, you can scrape that, right? Like you can, that, like that, that's your ceiling is to, hey, this guy can throw for 35, 40 touchdowns and be in an MVP conversation, right? But the opposite side of that is, is what, right? Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott, same conversation, Jared Goff at times, right? The, the back half of that NFC Championship game, there are moments where they have low lights, right? Where it's mm -hmm. not good, where it looks like they need something else to help pull them 
to the finish line, right? And so that's the context of the hitch conversation, right? Is that sometimes these guys can pull some stuff, and then sometimes these guys need to be pulled. And I'm right there with you with JJ McCarthy. Um the the full evaluation I, I think he enters the nfl as a hitch guy and if you're drafting him you're drafting him upside because you believe that he can evolve to a truck but also like we said the hitch is hey that, that that's a very important piece and he can make some things go with dp i'm gonna, I'm gonna go to i'm gonna name two more quarterbacks and then you just kind of let me know I'll, I'll let you know where i am and then you follow it up and i'm gonna just say michael Penix jr i'm gonna put him in that hitch conversation and then Spencer Rattler, I'm going to put him in that hitch conversation. Also, DP, how you feel about those two? No, I think both of them are hitches as well. I think they have, you know, some of the arm talent that you would look for in a truck and everything. But Spencer's a little bit, probably a little bit more uh, in terms of mobile. He can create a little bit more with his legs right now than Michael Penix can. He struggles with the pressure. I think Penix is that that shiny hitch, man. You put him on the right team and you got yourself a starter for the duration of a rookie deal I really, and probably another one. Yeah, and I'm not going to even take credit for this. I seen this on uh, on social media and somebody talked about um two attack of a lower, right? And I really like after watching my Michael Penix, I really like that, right? And and, and that's yeah. what we see and back to the hitch conversation, right? Thing is going right, two is going to throw for 350, 400 yards and put 70 points on a team, right? And then when things can be a little messed up, right? You get the two of with the pressure in his face, the mobility concerns, the answer for the pressure. And I think that aligns with Michael Penix in some factor. No, 100%, right? You know, and, and I think that's a – the Tua is, of course, they're both left-handed, but yep. handling pressure, right? Like when things are clean, when things are, are, are on time, on schedule, the difference is Michael Penix has that arm talent to really push it down the field. But their games are similar and how they win and where they lose are very similar, right? So I, I, I've always liked the, the Tua <clears throat> comparison. I always th I also thought about, like, just when the arm talent and the ability to stretch the ball and willingness to go deep down the field. I thought a little bit of Geno Smith from Michael Penix as well. But even Geno's a hitch. You know what I mean? When he's at his best, he's a hitch. So I think, you know, I think those guys, Michael Penix and Spencer Rattler, are both Good hitch quarterbacks. But I'm gonna say something. Keep two. I'm gonna invoke two names that I think are hitches. Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix out of Oregon is a hitch. I think you put him on like he could do the things that Brock Purdy did, but he's also like much more athletic and his arm stronger. So it's like, hey, if you can design like how Oregon would do, design those isolated deep shots. He could like the throws that Brock Purdy missed in the in the Super Bowl. Like, because arm talent, control of the arm, stuff like that, that is a problem for Brock. It's not a problem for Bo. So, so I think he let's... can be a hit. And then your boy, Jordan Travis, even though he wasn't a Dames dude, I think he's a hitch. <laughs> okay. I, I, I like that. You, you redeemed it. Jordan, come in the club. If I told you I'm going to get you in the back door, nice I promise ball, you. I, Jordan, <laughs> we're going to get you in the club. I promise you. But no, I, I want to ask you back to that Brock Purdy conversation because I want to know where you stand with this. You 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 compared Brock Purdy and Bo Nix, right? And obviously the arm strength is probably going to go in Bo Nix's favor. Mm -hmm. But you said he can do some of the things that Brock Purdy do. I question partial of that statement is because can he throw with anticipation like Brock Purdy does? Or are you saying put him in a scheme that fits him and then he can do what Brock Purdy does? Like what, what part of, like what, I guess what, what perspective were you comparing the Brock Purdy conversation? Yeah, I, I think if you put Bo Nix in San Fran, the way that, mm -hmm. that Kyle Shanahan ran that offense to where it makes anticipating windows easier. No, I'm not taking anything away okay. from Brock, but when yeah. you got motion and you're pulling linebackers east and west with pre-snap motion, got a backside in cut, and these linebackers are playing zone, they dropping off, but they don't know exactly who to have eyes on. It's a little bit. It's a lot easier to throw to a, that open spot, right? Well, we we broke down this film on the Draft Network YouTube channel, and during the season, right? And that was during the three game skid. And what happened? Every time he tried to put the ball where he thought it should go and anticipate the window in those during those three games, he was getting picked off. Cincy, Minnesota, and Cleveland, if I remember correctly, he got picked off like that. Baltimore with, with the Ravens defenders said, "Man, we know he throws to spots." So we want to get to the spots before the receiver, and I think with 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 um with Bo Nix, I think he can anticipate because he shows some anticipatory throws. But it was typically 
I know that this guy's supposed to be here type of throws rather than kind of, you know, looking off of the fit, looking defenders off and then coming back to that and still throwing with anticipation. That's why I have like the concern well, truly with him and Brock Purdy. So I think that, you know, as a, as a talent, Bo is definitely better than Brock. You know what I mean? Cause he's more talented. I just think that he could do similar things in a similar offense. If you give him the answer key. And I think that's what Kyle Shanahan does for Brock Purdy. Not take anything away from Brock, but he's just – the coach is doing a good job. Here's the answers to the test. Yeah, okay, so cool. So we're going to wrap this segment up real quick just to recap. DP, I went I went J.J. McCarthy. I went Michael Penix. I went Spencer Rattler for my hitches. You went those three guys, right, plus Bo Nix and Jordan Travis. So, so DP was a little generous on the hitches, right? And DP is usually a little bit critical, but he's a little generous on the hitches, which I'm cool with. But DP, you know what I'm excited for? I'm excited for this last segment, this last conversation, because we're talking about trailers, right? And what are trailers, the guys that have to be pulled? But man, there's so much context, right? Between, are we talking about Jimmy Garoppolo's? Are we talking about Baker Mayfield's who can still help you make the playoffs, right? Are we talking about Kyler Murray's? Are we talking about, right, uh, Aiden O'Connell, right? So we're we going to have this really good conversation, man, about these quarterbacks that wrap this thing up with the trailers. So coming up next, man, we are talking about the trailers of this quarterback class. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players like Giannis Antetokounmpo, Nikola Jokic, Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, and so much more. Plus, you can bet on the teams, right? The Miami Heat, Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, my Detroit Pistons. You can bet on them too, guys. I'm playing too to close out this season. And you can do all of that with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive, exclusive props, and so much more. All you need to do is visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot because FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Let's close this thing out, guys. Talking about the trailers, but before that, thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Kind of for being our everyday, our everydayers, man. We want to give y'all y'all flowers, but talk about the trailers. And this is uh, remember, Keith, you know, guys, Cam Newton went viral during the season. Game changers, mm -hmm. game managers. So that's what this conversation is, right? Essentially, the trailers will be with those we call the game managers, the guys that you would say. Yeah, the team didn't win because of like they're just managing the game, right? It it, it's, it has a bad connotation to it for most fans, but it's not a it's not a horrible thing. Keith, I look at the trailers of this class of this of this class. I so think wait, about I, I yeah. really I, I want to cut you off and ask you because I want to put this in context because this this is where stuff that there's a lot of gray area, right? Because I'm uh -huh. looking at DP. I have my quarterback list, my NFL quarterback list, and I'm pulling up names, right? And it's, it's a lot of wild stuff towards the back end, DP. And so I want to ask you, do you have any NFL comparisons for a trailer? Like, is, is, a, is a Geno Smith a trailer? Is a Baker Mayfield a trailer? Um, Kyler Murray, Sam Howell? Where, where, where do you put this conversation when we start talking trailers of the NFL? I think the guys you just named, <clears throat> I, was, I was thinking Sam Howell right now is a trailer. Like he he can't win your games. He's got to he's got to develop to become a hitch first. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think Kyler uh, has the ability to be a truck. He just got to stay healthy and get the right team around him. But he's shown that he can lead that team, and he has. But I think he's a hitch. I think Geno's a hitch. I think Baker's a hitch. When I think about trailers, Keith, I think about yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo. You okay. know what I mean? I okay. think about I think about Mac Jones. Right, I think about okay. those guys as as, as <clears throat> just trailers. Where it's like Ryan Tannehill, right? Is Ryan? Where's yeah, where's oh, Ryan? Ryan Tannehill to me is a trailer. He always has been to me, in the sense of when, <clears throat> excuse me, when the team when when the team is at was at their best and was making the playoffs and you know getting to the, the AFC Championship game and stuff that he that they have done. That was on the back of Derrick Henry, right? right Derrick right, Henry right. was the, okay. the the pace. He he dictated the pace and everything. Where 
Then you tell, you know, I think they had a, did they have like a 21 point lead or a 14 point lead in the AFC championship game in that first Super Bowl run for the Chiefs. And they lost the game because the Chiefs scored points, took Derrick Henry out of the game, told Ryan, Tan- Ryan Tannehill with AJ Brown to get it done. And he couldn't get it. Like, no, he's a trailer to me. I'm like, that's how I look at that. Okay, Can you pick cool. it? Trailer. Uh, you know sure. what I mean? So when I look at this class, Keith, you well, know, let's, and, and let's there's some guys off. here. What, what names you have as the trailers of, 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 of this quarterback class? Sam Hartman from Notre Dame. I think Sam is a guy that you can win with. You just won't win because of, right? And, and I think he's he, he's got a slight ability to maybe be a, a, a back-end hitch, but I think he's a guy that can manage the game, get the ball out, do what he needs to do, make those kind of gritty tough plays, right? You know, run the ball on, on, on fourth and two and, you know, Take a hit, you know, kind of keep the team energized. But if you say, hey, we're down 14 heading into that last eight-minute stretch of the fourth quarter and you got to throw it, I don't think he's going to be able to get you there. I do think that he's capable of keeping things on schedule and on time. But if it gets out of hand or if it gets to a point where he's got to lead you back, I don't particularly foresee that with his ability. Keaton Slovis is another one. This is a former – was he like four or five-star kid? Uh, come out of high school, went to USC, then transferred to Pitt, and then transferred to BYU. Man, <clears throat> he was trying to find some place to hook on to, Keith, because he was trying to be pulled. That's what that looked like to me. I, I never bought into the full hype of him, but I do think that there's some some redeeming qualities. So I think about, you know, a, a team like, uh, what is it, the the Vikings. You think about the, the, the Broncos, a team like where Sean Payton – if Sean Payton says, listen, I'm going to dial this thing up for you, just execute it, I think that Keaton Slovis could execute it. But, again, if you get into a game with a shootout with Pat Mahomes, sorry, Sean, you know what I mean? You're not going to get this dub because he's he can't get you there. And I got one more, Keith. And I I, I hate to say it because I want him to be a hitch. I just didn't like what I saw in Mobile. And I'm, I'm really concerned. With Michael Pratt. I think Michael Pratt. Is, is a trailer right now. I did, he disappointed me. Got had high expectations. Walked in. I'm like, man, I'm ready to see Michael Pratt go ahead and ball out. And then I'm watching. I'm like, this is not what I wanted, Mike. You know what I mean? Like, you, you let me down. All right? So I think right now, like, I think his his tools are hitch-wise. But it's just like, man, that, that week in Mobile is hard for me to get out of my head because that was rough. Right, 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 right. I'm a list of – I'll list off my trailer guys – and two of your hitch guys are in my trailer conversation. Uh, Bo Nix. Oh, wow. And then Jordan Travis. I put both of those guys. And then to round it out, I went Michael Pratt and Joe Milton. And I, and, and that's why I said it's I'm glad you brought up Milton because that was the name I was thinking about. Cool. Yeah, I want to have so, a conversation about that. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, we could definitely have a conversation about it. But, yeah, and, and I put those guys in there because I, I still see the upside, right, to kind of playing some winning football. Uh, you know, just with those guys putting good situations, good OC. And I think it's more so, right, when you, you, you jump down the ladder from trucks, hitches to trailers, right? It's it's almost like how many things have to be right. With trucks, yeah. it's like everything doesn't have to be right. Hitches, it has to be – you well, trucks is like, you know, things could be chaotic and they still make things happen. Hitches is like, hey, we need some things to be settled, right? And then trailers is like, hey, we need everything to be right for these guys to be able to do what they have to do, right? So it's kind of like a reverse, reverse type of order type situation. Mm-hmm. And those are the those are the four four quarterbacks. I think Bo Nix, um, I, I like them, right? There, there are some tools and skill sets there, but like I, I keep going, there's so much paint. I don't know what the picture is, right? That's on the canvas. So I have to put him in that trailer conversation. And I think that's what he will be early on. And hopefully he can turn the corner quickly. Um, and then Joe Milton. It's, it's the the tools, right? He has the tools, but it's where the tools going, right? We just don't know where the tools are going. And, and, and we see the flashes of brilliance, and then we see five more flashes of, you know, what's going on as far as accuracy and everything else. And then Jordan Travis, I put him in there because I, I think he's fun. I, I think that um, you put him in a good situation. I do think he'll make some things happen, but I think it's, it's dependent on, like you're saying, being with the Minnesota Vikings or uh, potentially – you know, the Cleveland Browns, right? If they just need a, a spark plug to do some different things. And I think there are, when we get into this conversation, DP, there are some NFL teams 
that can potentially grab one of these trailers, right? We just seen the Cleveland Browns do it and try to make a playoff run, right? That these young guys can come in and potentially do some things because there's enough in place for the NFL teams. Yeah, Jordan Travis to me, Keith, is that quarterback that we look at, you know, we may not, he may not be a <clears throat> like man, I'm, I probably wouldn't draft him to the fourth round and he gets to a team, and like you said, mid-season, late in the season, <clears throat> excuse me, he is pissing defenses off. Cause he's just out there playing football, like you know what I mean. Like he's just being Jordan Travis, and it's like, what is going? It's chaotic. It, it's it's unrefined at times, but yep. they're winning, right? And I think he, I think he I think he's one of the few quarterbacks, even though he wasn't a Dame's dude. He's one of the few quarterbacks with that that kind of just backyard again football style. I feel like he can make it work at the NFL level, whereas a lot of guys who tried it and they couldn't make it work, Keith. But Jordan Joe Milton, I. I wanted, I was gonna put him in the trailers too, and and it's crazy, Keith, because like you said, he's got the tools, but man, we gotta harness harness this thing. So it's like he's got the he's got the build of a truck, but you kind of gotta handle him like a trailer. You know what I mean? So is is he a trailer or not? You feel like he's he's kind of no, tier he, under? He's a trailer. I think he's a trailer right now. Like okay. it's just so much that work that in my opinion needs to be done with him. But it's like, if you can get it done, if you can be patient with I know he's 24 years old. I know people are going to be like, man, he's an older prospect. Oh, okay, fine. But he's got the tools that of right. a 21 year old. So it's like his game, like his arm talent is probably the best, if not the best in this class. He's got an elite arm. And he's probably, you know, he's probably going to hit four or five in the 40s, he's like six, five, 240. Man, like he's got God given ability that isn't going to change by the time he hits 28. Right, this isn't a guy that's gonna deep like his his talent's gonna dissipate and, and just fall off a cliff. Like, no, taking a twenty four year old Kenny Pickett in the first round, yeah, that's a little different, right? Because the arm to the, the tools weren't already there to be that type of prospect. So I think with Joe, he has the the tools of a truck, Keith. But I want to bring him in as a trailer and bring him along slowly. Get him to what we saw in the in the in the Senior Bowl game. Where before he threw that interception, and then everything went downhill after that. But that before that, he was executing, operating the offense, getting it out quick, getting it to his guys, not throwing everything through a brick wall, harnessing the arm. Then he tried to make a, a play that he probably shouldn't have made, should have just ran the ball. He got a little greedy. And it's like those type of things. And I feel like coaching wise, I don't know like if he got the right coaching at Tennessee in that offense. I think if he get him with a strong head coach that's going to support him and really teach him I, and a good QB coach, man, I, I think this trailer could be a hitch and eventually might be, be, be a truck, but he's got to be given the opportunity to be able to develop and get there. Yep. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see, right? We'll see how this quarterback class turns out. But there you have it, our tiers, right? We rank the quarterbacks, and then now we place them in tiers, right? Where we, where we believe these guys should be drafted and also shows, right, their, their success level as far as what teams they should be able to go to and be able to have some type of success with responsibility you could place on their shoulders but dp listen man that wraps up another show of the locked on nfl draft podcast with your favorite dynamic duo i want to say shout out to every day and thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day man if you haven't hit the like button go ahead hit the like button if you haven't commented commenting whether you agree or disagree let's talk about it man we have fun in the comments we talk we talk back man and then listen if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel go tell a friend or tell a friend that this is the best nfl draft content that they have out there listen man i am keith sanchez you can find me on x at the talent code that right there my co-host man the guy that gave out five hitches man that is dp <laughs> You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And they all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. We have Prospect Spotlight coming back up tomorrow, guys. We've got some coaching, but we're going to talk about some more of these things on tomorrow. So, so come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.